Algebra 2, Lesson 1-3. Write g of x in terms of f of x after performing the Gribben transformation on the graph of f of x. All right, we want to translate the graph of f of x to the left three units. So we got this point here. We'll go one, two, three. And we have this point right here. One, two, three. And this point here, one, two, three. And it's gonna look something like There we go. So g of x equals f of x plus 3. And that moved it to the left 3 units. Translate the graph of f of x up to units. All right, we got this point here, 1, 2, right there. And this point here, 1, 2. And this point, one, two. And it looks something like this right here. And we'll see g of x equals f of x plus two. Notice to move it left to right, it's going to be inside the parentheses. And to move it up or down, it is outside. Number three, translate the graph of f of x to the right four units. So we're, we're here, we're going to go one, two, three, four. Here, we're going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. So this is going to look something like this right here. And we're going to say f of x minus 4. And now we want to translate down three units. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. And it's going to look something like this. And we would say here G of X equals f of x minus 3, the g of x out here in front. Number 5, stretch the graph of f of x horizontally by a factor of 3. So how, well, let's see, what, what variable is affected there, the x or the y? We're going to take this, this point here. This is negative 2, 0. We're going to multiply the negative 2 by 3, and that's going to give us a negative 6. Okay? And how about this point here? We have 0, 2. If we multiply the x by 3, we're going to get 0 still. And here we've got 2, 0. Multiply the x by 2, the x by 3. That gives us 6, and we're going to be here, and it's going to look like this. And there we go. Ah. So this is going to be g of x equals f of 1 
third X. Okay. We stretched it out horizontally. Stretched the graph of F of X vertically by a factor of two. All right, here we've got negative two, zero. <coughs> if we <coughs> multiply the zero by two, we just get zeros. So that's going to stay right there. Here, this point here, we have zero, two. If we multiply that two by three, we get six. Or by, yes, multiply it by two, we get four. And then here, this is two, zero. We multiply the zero by two, we get, we get zero still, so. And there we go. And this would be g of x equals two times f of x. Good job. Number seven. Compress the graph of f of x by a factor of one-third. Now we're talking about horizontally, right? So which, which one is going to be affected by that? The y, or the x, I'm sorry. So we've got some point, we've got some point over here, and this looks to be, we'll use this point, that's negative six and then six. If we multiply the negative six by uh, one third, we get negative two. So that's going to be right here. Okay, and over here we have six, six. Multiply this six by one third, and we get two. And then our next graph is right there. And that would make sense. Compress it by a factor of one third, and that's going to look like g of x equals f of three x. Hmm. Compress the graph of f of x <coughs> by vertically by a factor of one half. All right. So if we're going to compress it by one half, we've got this point here. This looks to be uh, 6, 6. So this 6 here, we're going to multiply by 1 half, and that's going to give us 3. That's going to put it right there. And then over here, we've got negative 6, 6. Again, multiply this, and we're going to get 3. And we've got something that looks like this. And that would make sense. Uh, this, this here is half of that right there. All right, we flip, oh, hold a second. I don't think I, let's jump back. I did not write that, write that one out. Uh, G of X equals one half of F of X. Okay. Number nine, it says reflect the graph of f of x across the y-axis. So we would have some x, y, that would become x negative y, right? Okay, so we've got this negative two, zero, that's going to be negative two, zero. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That's negative x. Yes. Across the y-axis. So at some point here, we go over there and that point there. Mm. So like this point here is at negative 1. It would be at positive 1. This point here is 1. It would be at negative 1. Since that's negative 2, it's going to become 2. And since 2, that's going to become negative 2. And we're going to have something that looks like this. Okay, and this would be g of x equals f of negative x. 
reflect the graph of f of x across the x-axis. So now you have some point x, y would become, would become x negative y. Because this up here, this is positive y. This over here is negative y. This is negative x over here, and this is positive x over there. Okay, so you, uh, this is some point five five. That would be five negative five. This is some point five five. That's negative five five. It would become negative five negative five. And five five here would become five negative five. And oops. This is g of x equals negative f of x. Not bad, not bad. Number 11, reflect the graph of g of x. Reflect the graph of f of x across the y-axis. Okay, well, uh, the y-axis is right here. Oh, I did not. The y-axis is right here. Okay, Ooh. right there. So anything on this side would be moved over to that side. So we're over here at negative three, that's gonna be at positive three. Okay, and it's gonna look like this. Again, that would be g of x equals f of negative x. And then this one here, we're going to reflect over uh, the x-axis. Well, this down here is the x-axis. So what's here would become down there. So this is 3, that would be negative 3. And it would look something like this right here g of x equals negative f of x. Doing well, doing well. Number 13. Determine if the function is an even function, an odd function, or neither. Now, how do we go about doing that? How do we go about doing that? If you go back in your notes, and let's see, let me go. Okay, on page 35 in your notes, it gave you the definition of an odd and an, and an even. Uh, even, even said if f of negative x equals f of x, it was an even function. Odd, if f of negative x equals negative f of x, then it was an odd function. All right, so let's try to apply this. You have this point here, you have this point here, negative two, zero. Okay, so let's try this. So f of, uh, well, neg negative 2, f of negative 2 equals f of, well, that would be 2, right? Well, we've got this. This is 2, 0, right? And so that works. And if you pick this point right here, if you pick this point right here, let's try that. Uh, f of negative, negative 1 equals equals f of yeah, that would be negative 
they ruined that would equal ruin, right? And then there, uh, so this is this is right here, right? And that happens to be, well, this is one negative one, and this up here is well negative one. Uh, well, that's not negative one. That's negative three. Negative three, and this is positive three. So, okay, here we go. We put in we put in a negative one, and we got out a. And we put it into this negative negative one, and that came out to what well, negative three. So, this one, this one, is odd. Okay. The problem here was this was zero and that was zero, so it didn't work too super well. So this is an odd function. All right. Now let's try this one here. We have negative four zero and we have four zero. Okay. And well, we can let's do this point here because those zero sometimes may show. Let's do this point here. And what do we got? We've got that's negative three, and that's what one, two, three, and this up here is well, this is positive three, negative three. So let's try that. Let's put that in f of negative negative three equals well uh, f of or excuse me, negative f of 3. So let's try this. If we put in a negative 3, we're going to get 3, right? And then over here, well, we're going to get negative 3, because that's what that is. And then well, we get 3. Uh, well, that would be ne negative 3 again. So this one is an even function even function. Notice how, notice how this, this side over here, this side over here is an exact replica. If you were to cut this down here and then fold it over, this would, would lay right on top of that. There's your even function. Okay? That's your even function. And what about this one here? Well, do either one of these work? You put in negative, negative two, and you get zero. All right, well, but there's nothing over here. If you put in negative one and get one, uh, it's not, this one here is neither. All right, it's kind of, it's a little, it's a tad confusing. Uh, it gets easier. Determine. Number 14, determine whether each quadratic, determine whether each quadratic function is an even function. Answer yes or no. Uh, this one here, yes. How do I know? Well, let's see. F, <coughs> remember our equation is <coughs> F of negative X equals F of X. So let's think. All right, let's put in f of uh, well, negative one equals, and then f of one. Well, let's see. If we put negative one in there, negative one squared is one. Five times one is five. If we put one in there, one squared is five. One squared is one times gives you five. So yes, that works. What about uh, B here? What about B? Well, we'll do the same thing. You got negative one minus two, that's negative three. Negative three squared is nine. Well, if we put one minus two is negative one squared is one, those two do not equal each other, so that is a no. All right, and let's go over here, C. Well, we've got well, we'll try the same thing again. Negative one divided by three is negative one third squared is one ninth. And then one third squared is one ninth. So, yes. And then let's try, let's try, 
Let's try this one here. Well, one, negative one squared is one plus six is seven, and then one squared is one plus six is seven, so that is a yes. Okay, that is a yes. Fifteen, describe how to transform the graph of f of x equals x squared to obtain the graph of the related function g of x. Then draw the graph of g of x. Okay, let's see, what do we got? Uh, well, the negative here, the negative is a reflection. Uh, let me scoot this up a little bit. I may have to make it just a tad smaller. There we go. All right. So the negative here is a reflection, a reflection over, well, a reflection across the x-axis. So that's that's the negative one here, negative one. Now, uh, what do we got here? Well, this is, uh, this is, my, it, let me rewrite it, that negative one third O times F of X plus four. So now we have the one third, the one third is a vertical compression Kind of small. By a factor of one third, and then the last thing we have here is this right here. I know it says plus four, but that's going to be it's really negative four because this is supposed to be f of x minus h, okay? So if that's plus four, then that's really minus negative four. And that's gonna be a translation, translation, four units left. Left. Okay, so how are we gonna graph that? Well, first, we, we should, f of, uh, let me, the original, the original was x squared, right? And so zero, zero, one, one, and then two would be four, and that was that's gonna look like this right here. So we're gonna first we're gonna move it four units left. So we're gonna go one. One, two, three, four, right? That's what we're going to do first. We're going to compress it by, see how? We're going to compress it. Okay, so this was supposed to be, uh, well, that's supposed to be one, one, so that's going to be one and uh, one third. And I'm putting it down here because we reflected it over the, uh, the uh, x axis. So uh, two, two, one, two, and then, uh, well, one third. So it's going to look like this right here. It's kind of rough, but it is. What about this one here? Let's take this in the car. Well, <clears throat> we got the plus two here, right? So the plus two is we're gonna translate, translate up to well, two units. So the original, the original was here. Four. Oh, oh, 
the one did that. Anyway, so we're going to translate up to units. So instead of zero zero, we're going to be here. All right. And then what else? Well, this is 2x, right? So that's going to be, uh, uh, this is 2x. So we're going to horizontal compression, compression. by factor of, of, and it's going to be one half. So it was, it was uh, two, four. Now it's going to be one, four. Okay. Well, let's see here. Let's see. Be right there. That's going to be right there. And then there we go. Seventeen flying buttresses were used in the construction of cathedrals and other large stone buildings before the advent of modern construction materials to prevent the walls of large high ceiling rooms from collapsing. The design of a flying buttress includes an arc. In the illustration shown, the unit of measurement for both axes is feet and the vertex of the arch is point C. Find a quadratic function that models the arch and state the function's domain. Okay, so we're at this point 212 and we've got this point here 86. Uh, so we have we have our vertex here is 212. Our vertex is 212. Well, that gives you uh, some really good information because in HK is the vertex, right? So we can substitute the 2 in for H. H equals 2, and the K in or, or, or the 12 in for K. All right. And then, let's see how do we write that? equation. The equation was f of x equals a times, and that's going to be uh, 1 over b, 1 over b, x minus h. Well, actually, uh, I don't think we need that. I don't think we need this right. We've just got x minus h squared plus k. And there we go. There's our, our equation. So we've got this right. That makes things kind of easy. Okay, since we've got this and this, what do we got? We've got, well, we just need to figure out the, uh, we just need to figure out what the A is, because we've got the H and the K. So we just got to figure out the A. And this point H6 over here is going to help us. So uh, let's see, the Y is 6, so we're going to have 6 equals. And then we don't know what we don't know what a is, so we'll just put a right here. And then we have x. Well, x is eight. That's what I'm getting at. Eight minus h. Well, h is two. And then plus k, and k is twelve. All right. So now we just have to solve. Ooh. Now we do what. Well, this is actually squared. So let's subtract uh, 12 from that. I guess negative 6 equals a times, well, 8, that's 6, and that's squared. Well, 
let's just go do it like this. Let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. We have y equals uh, a times f of x uh, plus, well, f of, f of x minus h plus k. All right. So here again, let's put that back in. We got 6 equals a. And then uh, we're going to have f of, and that's going to be 8 minus 2. And then we have plus 12. So So what do we have? We have 6 equals a times, well, f of 8, that's f of 6 plus 12. Well, f of 6, there we go, that's 36. 36 comes x is squared, right? 36. And then, well, let's solve for it. What do we got? Uh, subtract uh, 12 from both sides, and we got negative 6 equals 36a, and divide both sides by 36, and we got negative 1 over 6 equals a. So g of x, g of x equals negative 1 over 6, and then what is do it by x minus 2 plus 12. And if you put that in that calculator, you get that. Good job, folks. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in class tomorrow.